occupies the highest part of the abdominal cavity. It's just beneath the diaphragm, which is here. Much the greater part of the liver lies to the right of the midline. Since the liver doesn't usually come below the costal margin, which is here, we can't get a view of it from in front by just removing the anterior abdominal wall. To see it, we need also to remove this much of the rib cage. In removing the lower part of the rib cage, we've made a big opening into the chest. We've left the diaphragm in place. Here's the diaphragm hanging loose along its former line of attachment. To make a tidy picture, we'll displace the diaphragm upward like this and attach it with stitches to the rib cage all along here, closing off the pleural cavity. Here's the underside of the diaphragm artificially flattened out, and here's the liver. We're looking at a large part of its outward-facing surface. Most of the liver is covered by peritoneum. There's an area behind that isn't, as we'll see. The liver is attached to its surroundings by peritoneal folds, which we'll look at in a minute. First, let's look at the overall shape of the liver. Here's the liver by itself, seen from in front. It has two main surfaces, a highly irregular posterior surface that's approximately flat, and this much larger outward-facing surface that's smooth and highly convex. The outward-facing surface conforms to the shape of the diaphragm, with which it's in close contact. Here in front, the two surfaces meet at this quite sharply defined anterior border. This is the gallbladder. It hangs down below the anterior border. Here's the liver, seen from behind. Here's the anterior border. There is no distinct posterior border. Here's the gallbladder again. This is the inferior vena cava. There's a lot to see in the posterior aspect of the liver. We'll look at the detail of the liver. Down to this pronounced notch on the anterior border, the hepatic notch. Here's the falciform ligament in a more intact dissection. Its anterior border is attached to the anterior abdominal wall, and its posterior border hangs free all the way down to the umbilicus. In its free border, there's a cord-like structure, the ligamentum teres, the remnant of the umbilical vein. The ligamentum teres runs through the hepatic notch onto the underside of the liver. Along this line, the two layers of peritoneum that form the ligament becomes continuous on each side with the peritoneum covering the liver. In the intact body, this cut edge of the ligament is attached to the underside of the diaphragm along this line. Here, it still is attached. That attachment ends back here, where the right and left sides of the falciform ligament diverge, becoming continuous to right and left with this fold of peritoneal attachment, the coronary ligament. The line of attachment of the falciform ligament and the hepatic notch divide the liver into a small left lobe and a much larger right lobe. That division exists only on the surface. Internally, the liver is divided quite differently. To follow the peritoneal attachments of the liver round to the back, we'll return to this view of the liver by itself. Here, divided, is the part of the coronary ligament that we saw from in front. It continues round onto the back of the liver, surrounding this irregular bare area of the liver, which lies directly on the underside of the diaphragm and the posterior abdominal wall. The coronary ligament is continuous with a line of peritoneal reflection that goes round the front of the inferior vena cava and back to the top. Four double folds of peritoneum extend from the edges of the line of reflection. Passing forward is the falciform ligament, as we've seen. Passing to right and left, near the top of the liver, are the two triangular ligaments.
seen from in front, here's the right triangular ligament. It ends here. Here's the left triangular ligament. It extends up onto the diaphragm, a little beyond the tip of the left lobe. The last peritoneal attachment to look at is the lesser omentum. This is the lesser omentum. It goes all the way down to here. Its lower part emerges from this complex area, the porta hepatis, which we'll come back to. Here's the lesser omentum seen from in front. As we've seen, it passes from the liver to the lesser curve of the stomach, all the way up to the diaphragm mentioned already. This huge vessel is the inferior vena cava. It's almost enveloped by the liver. Up here, the hepatic veins enter it, as we'll see. Here on the underside of the liver is the gallbladder, which we saw briefly from in front. We'll take a closer look at it in a minute. This busy area above the gallbladder is the porta hepatis, where the portal vein and the hepatic artery enter the liver and the hepatic ducts leave it. To see where the hepatic veins leave the liver will remove the inferior vena cava. Up here, just below the diaphragm, two or three large hepatic veins emerge from the liver and join the inferior vena cava. Further down, numerous smaller hepatic veins also join the inferior vena cava. The posterior surface of the liver is indented from top to bottom by this deep vertical groove, which ends down here at the hepatic notch. The lower part of the groove is formed by the ligamentum teres, which we've seen from in front. The upper part of the groove is formed by a continuation of the same cord-like structure, the ligamentum venosum. These two cords are remnants of the umbilical vein and ductus venosus. The porta hepatis lies just to the right of the middle part of the vertical groove. The part of the liver to the left of the vertical groove is referred to as the left lobe. The large area to the right of the groove is subdivided into three named areas, the large right lobe, the quadrate lobe between the groove and the gallbladder, here's the quadrate lobe from in front, and this irregularly shaped portion between the groove and the vena cava, the chordate lobe. More often, the chordate lobe is shaped like this. In front, the division between the right and left lobes is the line of attachment of the falciform ligament. Hepatis. Our view of the structures of the biliary system is crowded by the portal vein and the hepatic artery. We'll remove those blood vessels to simplify the picture. Here are the right and left hepatic ducts, the main branches of a tree that extends throughout the liver. They unite here to form the common hepatic duct. The common hepatic duct goes to here, where it's joined by the narrow cystic duct. The cystic duct, which runs in a spiral, fills and empties the gallbladder. Below this junction, the main passage for bile gets a different name. From here down to the duodenum, it's the common bile duct. We'll follow it in a minute. The gallbladder is a reservoir for bile. It fills and empties by way of the cystic duct, filling passively and emptying by contraction of its muscular wall. The lower part of the gallbladder hangs down below the free border of the liver. Its upper part is held against the underside of the liver by a common sheet of peritoneum, most of which has been removed here. To follow the common bile duct, we'll go to an intact dissection seen from in front. We've removed the left lobe of the liver and the transverse colon. Here's the gallbladder. Here's the lesser curve of the stomach. Here, between the liver and the first part of the duodenum, is the thickened lower part of the lesser omentum, also called the hepatoduodenal ligament. It's quite darkly stained with bile in this specimen. 
the common bile duct lies within it, quite close to the epiploic foramen, which is here. To see the common bile duct, we'll dissect into this part of the hepatoduodenal ligament. Here's the common bile duct. It passes down, out of sight, behind the first part of the duodenum. To follow it, we'll mobilize the duodenum and pull it over to the left. Here's the distal part of the common bile duct, dissected free from its surroundings. As it nears the duodenum, it's almost embedded in the back of the head of the pancreas. Here's a duodenum cut open, so we can see where the common bile duct and pancreatic ducts end. On the outside, here's the common bile duct, here's the main pancreatic duct, here's a minor pancreatic duct. On the inside, the bile duct passes downwards beneath the duodenal mucosa, creating this bulge. The bile duct and the main pancreatic duct open here at the duodenal the papilla. Liver the left lobe, the right lobe, the quadrate lobe, and the chordate lobe. Here's the falciform ligament and the ligamentum teres. Here's the coronary ligament and the right triangular and left triangular ligaments. Here's the inferior vena cava, the gallbladder, the porta hepatis, the portal vein, the hepatic artery, the common hepatic duct, cystic duct, and common bile duct.